Yahweh bless you. I'll be doing tonight's teaching, but before we get started, let us be obedient to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, 14 verse 5. I want all of you to speak in tongues. And uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Be zealous to prophesy or covet to prophesy. There's another one right behind. There's two of them on the other side. So. Okay. Father, we thank you for these words and uh, what, what a privileged time that we live in, that, that you dwell through your son Christ Jesus and each believer. And just as Saul, when he was looking for his father's donkeys, was able to seek out uh, your prophet, so can you now seek out, uh, we can seek out members of the body of Christ to hear from you because of the perfect sacrifice, the perfect propitiation, the blood, the Passover lamb of your son. So we thank you. So if anybody would like to manifest, please do. I'll speak in tongues and interpret. Bukwiliana eata, satame atumo sono ku eati, aleana eatumo son, ebiato queati, satate, aleana beki, bequeata. Be bold because you are courageous. You have you are victory in you, but my son advised into you who is victorious. So do not be afraid, but walk forth uh, boldly. In, in the life that I've given you in order that you may extinguish the fiery darts of the wicked ones and you can confront wickedness and shine your light of justice and righteousness upon it. I'll get a prophecy. Be upturning stones and looking and seeking in every single crevice I point out to you. Do not be disheartened when you don't find something because it's in a different spot. It's in a different place. You're just not looking in the right spot, but be diligent when you search. Do not look over things and gloss over things. Be upturning things. Amen. The opportunities that I've given you, the opportunities that I've laid before you are still there. Those opportunities are still available. Never forget that. And I, I just got an unusual communication. Um, a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge from Melania and Mom's prophecy that that I saw it just as uh, as some Christians might celebrate the Easter eggs and hiding candy for their kids. Uh, <coughs> so are Yahweh's promises for all of His children that wake up. He's got things hidden everywhere, but you got to be vigilant. You have to be seeking. You have to be looking uh, to find His treasures. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Father. And, and before we get started, turn to Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, 17. And this is just a good introduction to the, um, the teaching. It's page 623, for brevity's sake. For the sake of brevity. <clears throat> Would you mind repeating that again? 18th Proverbs 17. Think of somebody in high school. He's 18 or is he 17? Senior year. Easy way to remember for me. If somebody would read the first 17, please. Righteous is he that is first in his own cause, then cometh his neighbor and thoroughly searched him. Through. Uh, okay. And so, the, what is. When somebody first says one side of a story, they always sound right. So, you always going to say, it doesn't matter what side of the story and stuff, and, and there's better proverbs than that, but that was just a. a a quick one that got added onto the teaching. When somebody's talking about an argument or a divorce or a church split, and you say, okay, when can I hear the other side? And, and if they don't want you to hear the other side, there's a, it says a lot. But for, the, for the, tonight's teaching, the scriptures say somebody sounds correct until you hear the other side. And I like to think about a courtroom. They sound great on the witness stand. Okay, your chance. <laughs> Your witness, the scriptures is Yahweh speaking up and is his witness. There's so many traditions and teachings that people teach and everybody says it. And tonight what we're going to do is we're going to let Yahweh take the stand. What, is, what does he say? And instead of thus, thus saith what I believe or thus saith the church traditions or thus saith what my pastor wants me to say or thus this is what I say or I get kicked out. We should say, thus saith Yahweh, or thus saith the Lord, or Jesus Christ. He says, it is written. What a lesson, because when he, in Mark 3.35, when the serpent came to him, he said, it is written. Yeah. See, Eve did not say, it is written. So, uh, but the teaching um, is about adjectives describing two different characters. 
And before we go into these two different characters, I'm going to give you an introduction to these two different people to see if I can paint a picture for you uh, as before I actually before Yahweh introduces you to them. One of them is an unrepentant fornicator who Yahweh hates. Not my words. Yahweh hates him. If there was somebody that wanted to get close to me, let's say somebody wanted to, a girl wanted to marry me or something, and I'm a nice guy, but if it got to one subject, I say I hate that. What would they know? That word is black and white. That is not a great word. He's an unrepentant fornicator. And the other character says Yahweh loves him twice. Something's really, really, really important for those of you who are not students of the Bible. Do you know how rare it is for Yahweh to say he loves somebody? Yahweh said he loved Solomon. And when you look at that, you go, wait a minute. Nobody was as patient as Moses. So, so we say humble, but the word's patient. And it says in Genesis, seeing that Abraham has become my intimate friend, who had the heart of Yahweh. David, a man after my own heart. But who does Yahweh say he loves? One individual, he says it twice. For the records, I love him twice. Also, there's another word that he uses, an adjective. And in this adjective, and it had it not been for the world's most accurate Bible with a footnote to, to point me to the direction. So Rotherham, he'll probably 95% of the time, if there's a treasure, he's going to give you a hint. One of his adjectives is a Hebrew word called tom. That's how, phonetically, how you, it's, it's not how it's spelled. The word tom. Actually, grab your pamphlets. And what I'll do is I'll do this. I don't know, maybe you can do a picture of it later on and incorporate it. I don't know, but we will see. So at the very top, this adjective Yahweh uses to describe this character, tom. First usage, number one, what does it say? Perfect or complete. Perfect or complete. How about 1B? Sound. Sound. Wholesome. Wholesome. I, and what would be a synonym? What would be an antonym wholesome? How about a trickster? Yeah. 1B1, one, ordinary, quite sort of a person. What's the next one? Morally innocent, integrity. Uh, one is morally, ethically pure. And there's actually, I, I, there was a, another definition. Uh, so it's going to be the, the uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this is just one of the theological words, that, uh, but I have another one too. So there's going to be other a definition of this word. So the person is loved twice. Perfect, complete, wholesome, uh, wholesome, uh, morally innocent, integrity, ethically pure. Fornicator I hate, <laughs> complete, pure person I love, I love. And as far as I know, Solomon and this one's the only one that says, Yahweh says, I love him. Okay. Uh, except, no, Yehoshua. This is who my, my son, who I, 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 I don't know if he necessarily says that they're... Okay, so now um, turn to Hebrews chapter 12. The introduction to the first character. And it's really, uh, I'll read starting in verse 11 because it's, uh, there's a lot of endurance. Uh, because if you read chapter 12, it says Christ endured the death of the cross. How? Well, because it was the right thing to do. No, there's a, there's a reward promised him. A reward. Endure promises. And, and, and in the Gospels, you'll have your reward. You might have your reward, you know, your reward today by getting what you want. <coughs> Having pats on the back, uh, you, uh, or you can have rewards when you meet Christ. Um, verse eleven. But no discipline for the present indeed seemeth to be of joy, but of sorrow. 
Afterwards, however, to them who thereby have been well trained. There was a time in my life when my dad told me that Yahweh's name was Yahweh, and it was used 6,800 times. It made me very uncomfortable. I didn't like it. Everybody else calls him the Lord. Why can't I call him Yahweh? <laughs> he's in the room. <laughs> you say you don't like his name. You, he's the father of your boss, and that's not how you're going to get good with Christ by saying you don't like his father's name. Just, just saying. You can imagine. Um, but that was me. Afterwards, however, to them who thereby have been well trained, it yieldeth peaceful fruit of righteousness, training, endurance. Wherefore, the slackened hands and paralyzed knees restore ye, and the straight tracks be made for your feet. In, in, in exercising in business, Yahweh gave me a, uh, this isn't the teaching, but it's just this context. I was looking at everybody in the gym, and I was thinking, Yahweh gave me a flashback to me being in the gym. I'm seventh grade, what, 12, 13 years old, working out with high school kids. Some of these, the high school kids were going to go to Division One schools. So these guys are giants. These are Nephilims. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 82 pound, five foot one, seventh grader. <laughs> but he, ref, he showed me. He goes, Aaron, do you realize what I was doing? So Christ put this desire to get up, go into that gym. I was training with people a lot stronger than me. You know what that does? It sets your bar a lot higher. Because I'm not working out with people my age. Because there weren't seventh graders there. But I got to work out with seniors. And they made fun of me. Get out of here. And they pushed me out of the way. Who are you pushing me out of Never mind. But nothing. But, but, but if you want to get stronger, you hang out with more stronger people. If you want to get uh, more successful in business, hang out with more successful people. And here, discipline, discipline. Why would I want to do it? Everybody wants to be a big fish in a small pond. Um, uh, but... Uh, Wherefore the slackened hands and your paralyzed knees restore you. That is a motto of K State strength coach, by the way. It's on his wall. And straight tracks be making for your feet, that the lame member may not be dislocated, but the healer rather. K State was going to hire me as one of their strength coaches. I don't know if you guys knew that. And, and he showed me his scripture. And he showed me the coin. And then he showed me how much money I was going to make. And I was like, that's all I need. Now show me the door, because I'm not. <laughs> Uh, verse 14, peace be pursuing and, all, uh, all, and the obtaining of holiness with, without which one shall, ye, shall see the Lord. Using oversight, least any one be falling behind from the favor of Yahweh. Least any root of bitterness spring up above be causing trouble. And through it the many be defiled. Now here comes our character. Least there be any fornicator or profane person like Somebody read the next part? Esau. 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 Somebody else read? Who for the sake of one male yielded up his own firstborn, firstborn rights. For you know that afterwards, when he even wished to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For a pl place of repentance found he none, even though with tears he did really sought it. Does that paint a picture? He was crying, but he wouldn't repent. Are you kidding me? You sold the family ranch. You know how hard Yahweh worked just to, to get all this wealth with his father and you sold it for a slice of pizza and you wouldn't repent? And what else does Yahweh call him? A fornicator. Every sin is outside the body except for fornication. Um, and, and, uh, so, okay. So, so there's Esau. The fornication is Strong's number... Uh, let me see here. I think it's 40 verse 97. A man, okay, here, here, here's the usages of this Greek word. A man who prostitutes his own body to another's lust for hire. A male prostitute. A man who indulges in unlawful sexual intercourse of fornicator, sexual morality. That is who? Esau. Esau. Who is his father? Isaac. 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 I can't to say Isaac. Yeah, so Isaac and his grandfather was Abraham. And Abraham inherited all this. And then Isaac had to go through some really hard times. He was blessed. And then he got Esau. And what is he? It's like a Cain and an Abel. And here's Esau. Turn to Romans 9.13. So he's a dirty fornicator. Acts Romans... <clears throat> the 
Can somebody read that for me? What then shall we say? Oh. 9.13. Even as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Would you read verse 12 too? It was said unto her. Who? Her. Okay. Who her? Sarah? Rebecca. Oh, Rebecca. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, even as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What then? Okay, that right there. Yahweh just confirms right here in verse 12. Who said the older will serve the younger? Yahweh. Yahweh did. He, and who did he tell? Rebecca. Rebecca says, if all is well, what's going on inside? And Yahweh says, there's two nations that are inside you, and the older shall serve the younger. Isaac, because he loved Esau's game, we'll read that in a second, was going to bless him. He, he was going to undo what Yahweh said. Who gave them these kids? Because Rebecca was barren. Yeah. For 20 years, they couldn't have children. They finally get the children. We just get to witness a, a miracle baby. Can you imagine if they spit in Yahweh's face with this miracle baby? Yeah. And, and what happens with, with Isaac? For the, his, his lust of his flesh, his brother, he was going to bless the older, older, and younger. Who chose that? Yahweh did. Rebecca fixes it and told, tells Jacob, to lie. And what does Yahweh say about all this? What does he how does he feel about Esau? He hates him. This is a word hate. It means to hate, pursue with hatred, detest, to be hated, detested. One person Yahweh detests and he hates, calls him a fornicator, an unrepentant crybaby. And the other one, Yahweh says, I love. And that, and that word we're going to find out is this is actually quoting uh, Malachi 1 and 2. We'll go there in just a second. I'll actually go there right now. Uh, and this Greek word for love, go, go ahead and go to Malachi 1 and 2, chapter 1. Um, uh, and this is also key because in the Greek here we see that they use agape. And wait a minute, we're quoting Malachi 1. To see what the original text says. If somebody would read that, let me see. Malachi 1, verse 2. 1 and 2. Somebody read that. The oracle of the word of Yahweh unto is Israel by the hand of Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh, and yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Is not Esau brother to Jacob? inquireth Yahweh. Yet have I loved Jacob, and Esau have I hated. Is that, is that any, is, could it be any more clear how Yahweh feels about these two people? Church tradition bashes Jacob. Jacob yeah. they, uh, Google. Um, Jacob, the church's punching bag, Telios Ministries. And there's a whole paper on this, so yeah. they'll lay it out. And you're going to say, here's rumors. You ever had somebody, she, my, my niece goes to high school. Have you ever heard somebody where you heard rumors about somebody and they're horrible? happens all the time. And when I was your age, you know what would not happen? People wouldn't go ask him, what's up? Is this true? A rumor would go through. Church, the church has started rumors about one of Yahweh's characters, who he loves. And they won't, and we'll go right here and go, it is just the opposite. Even when you listen to the word of promise, when it goes into Esau crying, which it doesn't say he cried in the, in, in the Genesis, but he's crying to get this music, like it's so sad. It's not sad. He's a dirtbag. He's a fornicator. And Yahweh hates him. <laughs> Yahweh does not feel sorry for Esau. Yes, he cried in front of everybody, but he never turned. For what? Are you kidding me? He couldn't repent from for, for selling his birthright? What kind of heart is that? You, you can see somebody else like Manasseh. Would it be hard to turn if you're Manasseh? How many years was he an evil king? Yeah. 50 years? Yeah. Child sacrifices, male prostitutes. Oh my goodness, how am I ever going to turn around? He does. Esau wouldn't even turn around about his, selling his birthright for a slice of pizza. What kind of heart is that? And that's why Yahweh hates him. But Jacob have I ahobbed. I ahob Jacob. There's some things Yahweh ahobs. There's things that uh, he hates, he detests. And how ironic that the church loves what he detests and detests what he loves. Isn't that weird? Holy cow! And we're looking now. We're going to look at. So we looked at. Uh, there's two two verses saying Yahweh specifically 
Ahab, it's actually Yaakov. Uh, and the Hebrew word is Ahab. Um, and, and he actually hates Jacob. I mean, uh, it, uh, Esau. Esau. Now turn to Genesis 25. Now this was my treasure that I got to find because I was seeking. And thanks to my father introducing me to E.W. Bollinger because it's the most popular Bible translation on the planet. No. <clears throat> it's the most accurate transcript we can get. When in court or even in business, I own and run a business. I want it in writing. And if you want to go to court, you can say, I want to see the transcripts. I don't want it hearsay or whatever they said. I want to see the transcripts. Rotherham's is the closest thing you can get to the actual manuscripts and the transcripts of what actually happened. And it's, it's interesting. You'll find out New Living Translations, when it says yeah, Esau have I hated, they're not going to say that. Because in their doctrine right now, Yahweh didn't hate anybody. Yeah. Hate's not from Yahweh or Christ. It's all about love. So they changed it. They changed the word hate. Who he hates. And he, is there anything you guys hate? How about child molesters? I hate child molesters. Yeah, I do. There, there's no gray area. I hate them. And if I put that down, and I was writing a will, a last testament. I love uh, those who feed the, uh, the fatherless and the orphans, um, or, or be the fatherless and the widows. According to the scriptures, 65-year-old, she washed the saints' feet. I love those who honor my father in the scriptures. Child molesters I hate. And somebody comes along, we're going to change it. We don't like that word hate. What we're going to do, we're going to put uh, uh, disapproves. That would really irritate me. And that's what New Living Translation has done with that word. Why? Because it doesn't fit their, 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 uh, their rumors. The rumors that they have circulated for a thousand years. Genesis chapter 25, verse 27. Let's if I can get there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> somebody read 27 for me. And when the youths grew up, it came to pass that Esau was a man skilled in game, a man of the field, but Jacob was already... See the footnote? Man. He was ready. Footnote. Okay, keep reading. Man dwelleth in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because of the game he put in his mouth. But Rebekah was a lover of Jacob. Pause right there. All of you need to put a footnote right there. Who else loved Jacob? Yahweh. Yahweh. Rebecca loved Jacob. Yahweh loved Jacob. Okay. <clears throat> the word ready and the King James and Moses is going to say plain. He was plain. I've heard teachings that Esau was a manly man. He was a hunter. And Jacob was kind of a, you know. Limp wrist. Yeah, uh, yeah. She said limpress. I wouldn't have said that, but he, yeah, he was more of a kind of a. That's what I heard. Yeah, girly man. He was in a house. He was, he was. He's in the tents, and, and they're they're painting this picture. They're, here's their punching bag, and they're getting so used to picking on Yahweh's hero. You know that it says, not many of you should want to be teachers because of greater judgment. People are teaching, and they're bashing one of Yahweh's heroes. You're gonna be held accountable. <clears throat> if you don't warn your teachers, it's on you too. But what are they doing to who Yahweh loves? And Jacob was ready, but there's a look at the footnote, and this is what started this whole thing for me. Rachel, would you read the footnote? Handy, clever, versatile, all round, slash, tanny. And so I go, wait a minute, an all around man. What is this all around man? Then you go look up, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to this thing, Tom. And we're going to look at usages of this Hebrew word tom. When somebody, if you want to know what a word means in somebody's last will and testament, how does that individual use that word? Because some people say, I love you to strangers. They say, I love you to the mailman. They say, I love you to the TV. They say, I love you to the dog. What does that mean? How they use it says a lot. Then there's some people, they never say, I love you, unless they're getting ready to die or they're going to do something. How they use it matters. It tells us how, what they mean. And what we do is we look at how, how does Yahweh use this word, Tom. And under usages, it's H, uh, strong, or Strong's number 8535. In Job, I put all the usages of Job. I didn't, we're not going to go look at Job because if you try to use Job to disprove a church tradition, Job's a very complex 
book. So it's an understatement. Uh, but we, what we will do is we will go to Psalms. But in Job, how does the King James translate this word? You guys see what it says? Perfect. perfect. Every time I see this word, Tom says perfect. Uh, Psalms, now if you guys would take turns reading, starting from left to right, uh, Psalms 37, 37. And I underline this word Tom. How is it translated? It's Psalms 37, 37. Mark the blameless man, and behold the upright, for there is a hereafter for the man of peace. So this is the same word that Yahweh says, Jacob is blameless. 64, 4, to shoot in secret places at the blameless one. Suddenly they shoot at him and fear not. Proverbs 10, bloodthirsty men hate the blameless man, and as for the upright, they seek his life. Song of Songs 5, 2, I was sleepy, but my heart was awake. The voice of my beloved knocking, open to me, my sister, my fair one, my dove, my perfect one. For my head is full of dew, my locks with the moisture of the night. A song of Song 6 9. One alone is my dove, my perfect one. One alone was she to her mother. Pure was she to her that bare her. The daughters have seen her and pronounced her happy. Queens and concubines, and they have praised her. So, my perfect one in, in both in uh, Song of Songs. So we, so, we have blameless man, a blameless one. Blameless man, perfect, my perfect one, my perfect. And then good old blue letter Bible. And so, in a blue letter Bible, so I'm looking perfect, perfect. And then here's a footnote. And, and if it wouldn't have been a footnote for Rotherham, we would have known it. Because what is he as? Ready. He was a ready man. What does that mean? Rotherham leaves hints. Hints. Do your homework. Do your homework. Do your homework. And here's this word. This is going to be blue letter Bible. On this word, Tom. Perfect. Complete. Complete, perfect. One who lacks nothing in physical strength or beauty. Does that paint a picture of a man? Yeah. Physical strength or beauty? It's like I'm looking in the mirror. <laughs> dun, dun, Sound, wholesome. Ordinary, quiet sort of person. Complete, morale, complete morally innocent having integrity, one who is morally or ethically pure. Is that all of them? That's all of them. Okay, my, we changed my dad's name to Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and he's humble. Humble too, yeah. Uh, Jacob. And now, one of these adjectives. Now, I'm not going to go into the hipple and how the, because you have to look at the hipple and the, almost every other translation with, is it the qual, is it, how is it, how is it supposed to be used? Um, almost everybody's going to translate this word plain. Um, and even Rotherham would jump on board of bashing Jacob if you read his notes. But nowhere in scriptures has Yahweh ever bashed Jacob. And I, and I wonder that if you don't get on board with bashing Jacob, you're going to be out. You have to do it. But, um, but remember this one right here. One who lacks nothing in physical strength or beauty. The Blue Letter Bible. Now turn to... <clears throat> <laughs> Turn to Genesis 29, 8. Who is this character? And what we should tell anybody, if you're ever going to learn about Jacob, Jacob, then he said, you don't do anything. Don't read anything in Genesis until you read Hebrews, Romans, and Malachi. Why? Because it's the introduction to the two characters. Why is that so important? Because right now... There's a libertarian that told me that Abraham Lincoln was a racist. And he had slaves. And to back it up, he, he, he posted a YouTube video. Well, there you go. Abraham gave his life for black Americans. He died. Is that blasphemous? Did he, he had something right there? The church does the same thing about Jacob, one of Yahweh's heroes. You know, go, he's a heel grabber. He was a heel grabber. Why does Yahweh call him a heel grabber? Because he was. Because he grabbed the heel. <laughs> it wasn't a metaphor. Uh, okay, uh, 29, verse 8. Let's see. 59. Thank you, I got a little excited. A lot of excited. You said 59? Mm -hmm. Genesis 29? Yeah. Am I going to verse 7? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get there. 
-hmm. Nope, verse 8. <clears throat> okay. My favorite scriptures, this encounter, because Jacob runs away. He's going to meet Rachel, Lamb of El, or Little Lamb. And, he, and this woman, he, he, not the, the only thing that's unique about Rachel is that she pimped out her husband. <laughs> she was the first person to ever blame her per period on something. <laughs> and she was gorgeous. That's all we know about her. Rebecca was a righteous, righteous woman. What do we know about Rachel? Man, did Jacob have the hots for her. And I was wondering, well, maybe it was just, it wasn't physical. Then you look at the scriptures, and she was gorgeous. But what do we know about her? And what do we know about Jacob? Remember when the one definition of that one, Tom, perfect in physical beauty or strength. Okay. Strength. Why is that important? Keep reading this. Verse 8. He goes, he sees his girl Rachel. Boom, 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 boom. Holy moly. And this is not a natural thing. This is Yahweh stirring up. Yahweh wanted 12 tribes as promises to Abraham. But here's this girl. What does he see? Wow. Here's a shepherdess in verse 8. And he goes, why aren't you watering your flocks? In verse 8, she responds. And they said, we, or, or they said um, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and they roll away the stone from off the mouth of the well. And then can we water the sheep? While well, yet he was speaking with them, Rachel had come in with the sheep. So I, I flipped that. So Rachel had not come in. Why aren't you guys watering the sheep? There's not enough... It takes a bunch of shepherds to move the stone. While yet he was speaking with him, Rachel had come in with his sheep, which belonged to her father, for a shepherdess she was. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of, his, of Laban. Who's recording this, guys? Yahweh. Yeah. This, this isn't a fan. This is the fan. What is, Melania, read the next. Jacob went near and rolled away the stone from off the mouth of the well and watered the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. He's got the strength of several shepherds. That one saw word. saw that before. He's perfect, he's perfect in strength. Uh, or, or, or here's one of the adjectives that could be towards this guy. You go, holy moly, you start reading about Jacob. There's a chance that he's a six foot two, big, strong guy. And, and uh, it, it, uh, but uh, so what does he do? He's got the strength of uh, apparently impressed Rachel too. But what does he look like? He's not a pretty boy. He's good looking. But here's a guy that can do his taxes and cage fight. <laughs> He's a gentleman, but you wouldn't want to cross him. A man of iron and a man of steel. And Jacob is actually the type of Jesus Christ and a King David too. Could do both. What did David look like? And he could Same sing. He writes songs. But what else? He can cut the head off people, and he can kill people real quick. Lots of uh, you know, whatever it says, and so he's the perfect thing. So you look at D Jacob. Uh, now turn to um, thirty-two twenty-four, <clears throat> chapter thirty-two, verse twenty-four. <clears throat> and because of that one word, that one word that was used. That Rotherham pointed out that I would have never saw in any other translation. Joseph Rotherham, or uh, uh, Young's didn't, didn't give it any attention either. But right there you get to read with Rotherham, right Tips, and you go look at this and goes, there's a chance that he was really, really strong too. Why is that important? Well, would somebody read 21, I'll tell you when to stop. 21 through 26. So the present passed over before him. Whereas he himself tarried that night in the camp. And he, <clears throat> and he arose in that night and took his two wives and his two handmaids and his eleven sons and passed over the ford of Yabbok. So he took them and went there and took them and sent them over the brook and went, sent over that which he had. And Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the uprising of the dawn. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then said he, Let me go, for uprisen hath the dawn. And he said, I'll not let thee go, except thou bless me. What that kind of guy is this? He won't tap out. Tap out, man! I just dislocated your hip. No! Is this a sissy? 
Look, and then when you take this picture, that he can be perfectly in, 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 in beauty and in strength. And here he is, he's fighting a guy, and he doesn't back down. And he wrestles. What's the point of all this? This is very unusual. But what's going to happen next is he's going to get his name changed, too. Then he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Not Jacob. Shall thy name be called any more but Israel? For thou hast contended with, ja with God and with men and hast prevailed. Then asked well, Jacob. pause right there. But... When you read that again, with the word Tom, it can be perfect in physical beauty and strength and all the rest of it, you start looking at it, maybe if you did a picture of him, maybe this is a big guy. And not just a big guy, he's a tough guy too. Gonna go, what kind of person, to, and there's another one I was reading, Spurgeon talking about this, going, he's, he's a guy, he, Spurgeon was explaining some of the things about Jacob, he goes, he's a deal maker. He doesn't quit. He, he's always making deals, and, there's not, and he's defending Jacob too. He's gonna go, I'm not letting go until you bless me. Dude, you, your hip. Look at your hip, dude. It's all right here. Not until you bless me. What kind of guy is that? He's tough. What does he do with his brother? His brother goes, I'm going to die unless I eat. No, it's my food I'm eating. Uh, give me your birthright. Okay, fine. You're an idiot. You're a moron. Why did he sell? J J Jacob didn't trick him. Um, but anyways, so adjectives that Yahweh used to describe two characters, Esau a fornicated crybaby that he hates. I hate him twice in the scriptures. And he didn't say that about Manasseh. Yeah. Manasseh turned. Judah turned. If you keep reading what happens to Judah, Judah does, it doesn't. It looks very unusual. With Judah, but he turns. Uh, but Esau never turned. And then and Jacob calls him Tom, which could, which could be perfect, and says, "I love him twice." Why is that important? Because, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. He calls him perfect, or Tom. Says, I love him twice in scriptures. And how many times did he ever say Je Jacob did anything wrong? Zero. How many times was he corrected in scriptures? Zero. Why is that important? I'm just going to name a few people that were corrected in scriptures, that Yahweh was not, did not hesitate. <clears throat> Moses, corrected in scripture. David, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. King Saul, went to the witch of Endor. Paul, uh, when he was Saul, he gets corrected. It's in, it's in. Peter, reproved to the face. He has no problems with reproving people. How many times has Jacob reproved? Zero. In fact, he's called perfect, or Tom. And so, getting the record straight, Proverbs 18, 17 says, you've heard the rumors about this guy, but one day we're going to meet this guy. Can you imagine him going, that's what they're talking about me? Are you serious? Can you imagine Abraham Lincoln going, they call me a racist and I had slaves? <laughs> and and, and uh, they're like, good luck to those teachers. But hopefully they'll, they'll turn. And if you love your teachers, you're going to tell them, you need to read this. But the easiest thing to do is you go, Jacob, the church's punching bag, tell you this ministry, turn it off. Just say, read this and yeah. tell me what you think. And if you disagree with it, show, show me some scriptures. And do you know what they'll come back with Jacob? Well, everybody knows. Everybody knows. They're going to go, you're going to be judged on how you talk. And if you don't repent for blaspheming who, a person who Yahweh loved, God forbid he, you have like an Esau moment. Now, you didn't say you're going to lose your salvation, but you're going to be judged over that thing. If you're not going to give it up. <laughs> but Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for Joseph Rotherham, for Dad's uh, teaching on uh, Jacob, the punching bag of the church. Uh, to, to point out and stick up for your loved one. And we thank you for these words. Know, my, my children, that I have so many blessings for you but, you, but I need you to seek after me, not man's approval, not likes on Facebook, not, not pats on the back, not groups of how many people you sing to or minister to, but focus on me. And, and, and in that secret place and in, that, in those quiet moments, I'll tell you what you are to do. And for there are John the Baptist, and there are different members in the body of Christ, and some people are supposed to be all by themselves, other people great leaders. I'll carry that burden of what you are supposed to be if you will seek me out and let me set you free. Amen.